create and manage purchases in Noify, in the home screen, click where it says Purchases under Transactions. From here, you'll see a list of purchases that you've made that are currently active and open, awaiting a bill. In the lower part of the screen, you'll see a section called Company Purchases. If a purchase is submitted by someone else and needs your approval, it'll show up in this section below. If you want to review and see the details of the purchase, you can click on the arrow to the left hand side of it in the list. When you're inside the Purchases Details screen, you'll be able to see who the vendor is, the outstanding balance, any bills that have been logged, and you can email this purchase to the vendor if needed at this point in time. From the Manage Purchases screen, we also have the ability to add a new purchase to the system. You'll see that you're prompted for a purchase type. A purchase order will remain open until a vendor bill has been logged against the balance of the purchase order. An expense will automatically close as it's been paid with cash or a debit card already. You can also enter credit card expenses that will prompt you for which credit card account it needs to sync to in QuickBooks for matching with the bank feed. You can use flexible spending POs for purchases that are open until the total dollar figure has been billed instead of the number of units and reimbursements for when employees are buying materials with their own money and need to be paid back by the company. We'll start with a purchase order and we'll select a vendor. Once the vendor is selected, you'll have the ability to enter in a description of what you need to buy, the item number if necessary, how many units of this material you're buying, and the cost per unit. And if you need it to be simpler, you can also always reduce the quantity to one and just enter in the total unit cost you expect to pay. And the last field will allow you to allocate this to a job so you can update the current committed cost to date on this project. If you have multiple items on one purchase, you can click Add Another Item and fill this out as many times as you need whenever creating a purchase in Noify. You'll see that it automatically allocates to the last job used on the previous line. And if you need to make an update, you can, whether it's to the whole job or just to a different phase of the same job. Underneath, there will be other fields for setting things like the purchase date, if it needs to be overridden other than the date that you're entering the purchase. Nova will automatically set PO numbers for you, but you can override it if you want and verify that the number hasn't been used before. And you can upload receipts or supporting documents for storage in Noify or to be emailed to the vendor as necessary. When everything's set, we can click Verify and Submit at the top of the screen. And when we submit this purchase, it'll add the cost to the job as a committed cost. And Noify will generate a purchase order document, which can be emailed to the vendor directly through the system. Purchase order documents can be customized on request by emailing support at noify.com. You can also customize the email that goes out with the purchase. And you can edit some of the information that goes into the actual document itself under where it says Advanced Settings. You can switch between setting the shipping address to the job site or your company's headquarters, and you can include additional information to be added to the box below the rest of the purchase order. The advanced settings also have the ability to update the contact information for your company when this is sent out, and you can also choose whether or not you want to include pricing on the final document. Once this purchase is created, You'll also have the ability to log any bills against it since we created it as a standard vendor will invoice purchase order. When you receive the bill from the vendor, you can click the arrow in the top right corner of the purchase order detail screen and click create bill for PO to have it automatically log a bill against all of the outstanding lines. From here, you can also make any adjustments to the final values on the bill, or you could just submit if everything lines up between the bill received and the purchase order created initially. This will pull you to the Bill Details section, and you can see that the PO is closed, and click the link to go back to the Purchase Details section for the purchase created earlier. You also have the ability to mark items as received inside purchase orders, so you're not just managing the bills that were logged, but also which of the items ordered were delivered to the job site or headquarters. From the menu, you also would have the ability to edit if necessary create a duplicate of the same purchase order, 
and then if you need to, you can delete purchase orders from here as well or reopen them for more bills to be logged. Then clicking on the job name will pull you into the plan and track section where you can see the updated material cost to date of the job versus the budget. You can see it categorized into the different phases and each phase will show what purchase order number has been logged against it and whether or not you've received a bill as well. The next type of purchase that we'll cover is an expense, specifically one paid with cash or debit. These types of expenses will automatically be closed because they'll be paid in full at the point of the purchase. We'll select our vendor, and just like before, we can enter in all of the materials that we've purchased. The difference here is that we're entering in materials that we've already purchased, and we have a known value to each of them, as opposed to a purchase order, where we're just entering in the committed cost that we expect to spend on all of these materials. Again, you have all of the options to set purchase date and PO number, and when this is submitted, it'll automatically sync to QuickBooks, since there's no more transactions to follow this, like the bills do with our purchase orders. You'll see that it shows this purchase was closed automatically, and there's a Synced with QuickBooks button, so we can view this and see the transaction that was generated in our QuickBooks account by the expense that was logged in Noify. The mapping is based off of what we set for our expenses defaults in Noify's QuickBooks module. You'll see that the payment account on this expense is set to cash, and the category is currently set to our cost of goods sold supplies account. To adjust this mapping, we can go click the QuickBooks module in the top right corner of Noify and go to our expenses defaults, and we can see that these are the default accounts set for our Home Depot vendor in Noify. If nothing was set, it would use the account set at the top of the screen. Here it shows uncategorized expense and bank. For instance, Airbnb doesn't have anything set for it, so it'll go to the defaults at the top of the screen. We'll clear out the mapping for the vendor labeled Amazing to show how this example works. Click Clear Defaults, and we'll add a new expense, and in this case, we'll create a credit card expense so we can see how these sync as well. What's different with a credit card expense is it'll prompt you for a credit card account, and these credit card accounts will automatically load into Noify based off of the ones that are active in QuickBooks. We'll select Amazing to get the default mapping instead of the vendor level mapping, and enter in our information that goes into this purchase. Once we're content with the contents of the purchase and we click Verify and Submit, this expense will also sync to QuickBooks but the payment account will be set to this credit card instead of going to the vendor or company default payment account. You'll see the payment account set to the credit card, and our category set to uncategorized expense, which was the overall company default for vendors where they don't have another account specified. Next, we'll cover flexible spending purchase orders. We'll add a new purchase order, and under purchase type, select flexible spending. Flexible spending purchase orders are different because they're not closed when a bill has been logged against each unit, but they're closed out based off of the dollar figure of the purchase order. You'll see we're not prompted for units, we just enter in a total cost of the materials that we're buying from the vendor on this purchase order. We can still associate it with a phase, and when we submit this, it'll still remain open, just like our standard vendor will invoice purchase order. However, when we log a bill, instead of logging a bill against each unit in the purchase order, We'll keep the quantity at 1 and just adjust the total price that the vendor is billing us at this point in time. It's worth noting that all subcontracts in Noify are managed with flexible spending purchase orders. You'll see that this remains active, and if we open the purchase order, we can see the new balance. And when we log another bill against this, it'll know the updated balance for us to log a bill against. And when the total value has been billed, this will finally close the purchase order. The last purchase type we'll cover is reimbursements. When you log a reimbursement, it'll automatically show the user's name as the person to be reimbursed, although this can be updated if someone needs to enter a reimbursement for another user. Once all the value is entered and everything selected just like a standard purchase, 
you can submit this purchase and it'll automatically remain open and log an open bill using the resource or employee as the vendor. This way, you can review what's outstanding with each employee based off of what's outstanding in the bill section and they can be paid all the same. And the status of the purchase will be connected to the open and closed status of the bill. So once the bill is closed and fully paid, you'll see that the reimbursement purchase has also been closed since it's no longer outstanding or needs to be paid back to the employee.